sugar. It's sweet, it's delicious, it's not the least bit healthy. While it fits into just about every piece of food, we're just beginning to understand its role in weight gain and other health complications. But why is it taking us so long to figure that out? Today on Weird History Food, we're going to learn about the ways the sugar industry works overtime to keep you in the dark about its shady practices and what you can do to counteract them. But before we do that, why not subscribe to Weird History Food to keep yourself informed about the strangest food facts we can find? Now, on to some not-so-sweet deeds that may leave a sour taste in your mouth. When a spice becomes known as white gold, there's always going to be someone with bad intentions trying to get their hands on it. And despite its sweet reputation, we're not going to sugarcoat it. The widespread popularity of sugar has a dark and bitter origin story in slave labor. Sugar, which was once considered a luxury spice among the wealthy Europeans, originated in the West Indies and Brazil. As the New World was colonized, the profitability of sugar became hard to ignore as it financed the growing American colonies. To ensure that the labor-intensive sugar crop remained profitable, a cheap workforce was needed to tend to the crops. We all know where this is going, right? Yes, grim tale as old as time, slaves, including children, were used in the backbreaking and deadly work of harvesting and processing the sugar cane. These plants, mostly located near New Orleans, operated day and night. Surrounded by dumps, prisons, and a general air of hopelessness and human greed, it's no surprise that plantation workers weren't treated very nicely at all. Exhausted workers were prone to losing limbs in the balers and other processing equipment. Despite these atrocities, the sugar money kept rolling in, allowing the disease of greed to win. The result was a virtually unchecked sugar industry that promoted indigenous culture destruction and the enslavement of many. We don't remember any verses about this in the Archie's Sugar Sugar. With sugar's worldwide popularity, its power and influence over American politics also began to grow. In 1816, the U.S. Congress imposed a tariff on all imported sugar, sometimes up to 16 to 19 percent from places like Cuba. These tariffs granted more power and consumption to the sugar produced from slave labor in Louisiana. Because you don't want your nation eating some other country's blood sugar. Around the 1820s, a Louisiana banking scheme dialed this whole situation up several notches. As a grower, you were able to pledge your estate and your slaves to the bank as an asset and borrow back part of the assessed value. By doing this, sugar plantations could expand their acreage while growing their slave populations at the time. In turn, this allowed banks to sell slave and mortgage-backed securities to investors. Talk about despicable. Louisiana stating there was no risk involved in these arrangements prompted investors to jump on the opportunity to purchase even more enslaved people. Slavery saw an uptick of about 86% in the 1820s and continued on ever upward in the future. Artificial sweeteners aren't looking so bad now, are they? We know on a channel about history, you expect all of these entries to be planted firmly in the past. Well, we have some grim news for you on that front, dear viewer. Turns out slave labor is still alive and well in the sugar industry today. Over in the Dominican Republic, labor camps, called Beatties, are home to thousands of indebted Haitians. These people are forced to work 12 to 14 hour days for less than one dollar and are paid in company scrip rather than real money. Lured to these fates with no identification papers and promise of paid labor, these starving people are often intercepted by traffickers who sell them to these sugarcane farms. Just check your pantry. Odds are, you're buying the products that are the result of this forced labor. In 2017, the UK instituted the Modern Slavery Act to ensure there is zero tolerance for products created via slave labor. In 2022, the Biden administration blocked all shipments from the Central Romana Corporation due to allegations of poor labor conditions. From the moment we learn to talk, we learn to lie. It's the human condition to downplay our wrongdoings or get what we want. And no one is as aware of this fact or quite so good at it than the sugar industry. In the 1960s, a group called the Sugar Research Foundation was formed in an attempt to diminish concerns about sugar's role in heart disease. They accomplished this by lying to the Harvard scientists who conducted the research and not disclosing who was bankrolling the study. Surprise, surprise, it was the sugar industry. They weren't happy about the possibility of sugar contributing to heart disease. 
From there, the powers that be were able to pick and choose the studies that were done and redirect concerns away from sugar and, instead, falsely attribute heart problems with fat and cholesterol. The untruthful findings were published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 1967. Publication in such a prestigious magazine gave the sugar industry free reign to shape the scientific debate around sugar and fat for over 50 years. Research not funded by Big Sugar so far does not exist, but we're sure someone will debunk this any day now. Any day now. If there's one thing humans love to do, it's indulge. Whether we're binge-watching Cake Boss or just binging on cake, we entertain a wide array of guilty pleasures. The sugar industry knows this, and not only do they know, they're counting on it. The sugar industry makes a concerted effort to hide the effects of our continuous sugar consumption. It turns out our need to give ourselves little rewards, whether we deserve them or not, is paramount to the sugar industry's success. Molecular biologist Marian Nessel says, Food company sponsorship undermines the public's trust in nutritional science and confuses the public about what to eat, whether intentional or not. Marion goes on to say that dietary guidelines are comprised in ways that are not beneficial to public health. And she's absolutely right. Sugar is, at the end of the day, a poison that promotes fat storage in the liver, creates insulin resistance, which forces increased insulin production, and promotes tumor growth. And we're putting this stuff in our kids' breakfast cereals. But the industry is working hard to ensure you don't hear about things that would be bad for business. If you ever find yourself going against the World Health Organization because they said the thing you're selling is not very healthy, you may just be the villains in this story. And that's exactly what the Sugar Association did. Along with a few other big food industry groups, the Sugar Squad didn't ask, but demanded that the United States Congress stop funding the WHO. Why, you may ask? Well, the WHO had the audacity to claim that sugar could contribute to no more than 10% of a healthy diet. When the job is to organize the health of the whole world, one can assume they know what they're talking about. But Big Sugar wanted the WHO's report on sugar to be withdrawn and for the government to stop supporting them since it hurt the almighty bottom line. The sugar giants of the world have made it abundantly clear that their only interest is in their profits. And if the rest of us have life-saving information withheld by these corporate ghouls, then so be it. Look, we love sugar and all, but we're certainly not ready to be sacrificed to the sugar gods for it. Mmm, sugar gods. When you think of sugar, odds are you're picturing candy, chocolates, or baked goods. But those aren't the only sources of sugar in your diet. In fact, several of the foods advertised as low-fat or light usually contain more sugar than their regular counterparts. So that low-fat yogurt you bought really just uses more sugar to compensate for the lack of flavor. Sneaky. Hey, this yogurt is really something, huh? And it's non-fat! I've been waiting for something like this my whole life, and it's finally here! <laughs> we actually consume a lot of foods that we don't realize are just lousy with sugar. Ketchup, spaghetti sauces, and even tangy and delicious barbecue sauce are hidden sugar gold mines. Trying to stay healthy after that workout? Don't reach for a sports drink, fruit juice, or vitamin water. Despite their healthy-sounding names, they all sport a more than healthy amount of that sweet, virulent sugar. Even canned soups are as high in sugar as they are in sodium. A double whammy for all four ventricles in your heart. They even add sugar to canned fruits, which already contain a good amount of sugar in the first place. With all this sugar hiding in the foods you eat every day, maybe take a closer look at just how much you're consuming without knowing. We've learned sugar is bad for your body. It's bad for civilization. May as well ruin the planet while we're at it, right? Well, that's precisely what sugar does. Sugarcane growers typically use nitrous oxide fertilizer, one of the more potent greenhouse gases, which has 300 times more potential to increase global warming than any other gas. More sustainable options are currently being adopted, but seeing how the sugar industry has been able to circumvent giving a hoot, we won't hold our breath. Or maybe we should, on second thought. And beyond just hurting the rest of the planet with these irresponsible tactics, they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot as the higher winter temperatures can ruin the ripening process of sugarcane. Sometimes irony is sweet. Like many of the finest illicit drugs, sugar promotes the production of dopamine in humans. Dopamine is where our brain gets its cravings and what keeps you coming back to the dessert table for seconds, and thirds, and fourths, and so on. 
Foods with high sugar content are manufactured to override your self-control and make you want more. And really, who can stop after just one cookie? Animal studies have shown us that animals are more driven to sugar than cocaine, proving it to be more addictive than a pile of white lightning. While animals experience withdrawal from the sugars, humans have sugar delivered directly to their bodies from a variety of different sources. That means the industry has to find new, sneakier ways to make you want what they've got. And they're very good at it. What would you say if we told you there is an amazing, completely natural and safe alternative to sugar that makes food taste like it was sweetened by the gods themselves? You tell us to put up or shut up. Yes, this fruit exists, but no, you haven't heard of it. We'll give you three guesses why, and the first two don't count. If you guess the sugar industry and lobbyists have silenced the miracle fruit, well, you would be right. Miracle fruit has a glioprotein fittingly called miraculin. It makes everything you eat taste sweet several hours after consuming. Think about it, you could bite into a lemon like it was a sweet Georgia peach and get none of the sour taste, like biting into lemonade. That is a magic fruit. And in 1977, the miracle fruit was banned by the FDA thanks to the likes of Donald Rumsfeld and J.D. Searle. But don't worry, they gave us something even better. Did we say better? Make that toxic. Rumsfeld and Searle were the creators of aspartame, the cancer-causing, less delicious version of sugar. Instead of grabbing a little packet of poison, maybe run out and grab some miracle fruit of your own. We're told it's pretty tasty. So what do you think? What sugary facts surprised you? Let us know in the comments, and be sure to check out other tasty videos on Weird History Food.